Thank you, John and Tom. On behalf of the faculty, the alumni, and friends of Baskin Palmer, it's a privilege for me to present a nostalgic review of the last 50 plus years of the Baskin Palmer Eye Institute. On the first slide, you see the dream of the Eye Institute. And now, on the right, you see the reality. Let's start with who was Bascom Palmer. He was a Floridian who received his MD degree from Tulane, was a captain during World War I, and returned to Philadelphia to receive his residency training, returned to his home state of Florida, and opened his practice in 1923. He was a highly respected uh, double ENT physician who concentrated on ophthalmology and performed the first corneal transplant in Florida. In 1943, he conceived the idea for an eye clinic. Using Bascom Palmer's words, the goals of this eye clinic were to provide eye care for indigents and others treatment and research, con conservation of sight, and dissemination of information. In order to accomplish this eye institute and eye clinic, there was a need to be affiliated with a medical school, and that was around the corner. In 1952, the new medical school came to the University of Miami. In order to use the faculty at the University of Miami for anatomy and physiology and biochemistry, the Biltmore Hotel was the ideal location. You can see that uh, the building is similar to today, but it served as a veterans hospital through World War II and up until the 60s. The classrooms were on the east side of the building in the east uh, building, and the gross anatomy labs were on the right side. Notice that uh, the cadavers were actually in this room, so keep that in mind when you're having your steak tonight. <laughs> but Bascom Palmer uh, was very successful in organizing ophthalmology in the Miami area. He was responsible for the dedication of the first lighthouse for the blind in 1949. And he was important in the creation of the division of ophthalmology at the new medical school. Unfortunately, Dr. Palmer passed away some four years prior to the arrival of Ed Norton, but the dream was there. As we've heard earlier from George and others, this was the first office building uh, that Dr. Norton arrived, uh, and it was not cockroaches, it was cucarachas that inhabited the building. And Dr. Norton uh, took the department after one year forward with growth by hiring the best talent uh, in ophthalmology. Victor Curtin arrived in 1959 followed by Lawton Smith in 1962, Don Gass in 1963, and John Flynn in 1985. This is the first full-fledged Bascom Palmer Eye Institute residency class. Uh, missing from this uh, photograph are Gordy Miller and Charlie Clevenger, uh, uh, who were important players. The faculty grew and uh, more uh, faculty were added. Notice that Dr. Norton was the giant among this uh, group of people, but Dr. Norton was standing on the second uh, stairwell, whereas the rest of us were on the ground level. The residency and fellowship classes continued to expand and become more colorful. Here we see the group of residents headed by Chief Resident Charlie Barr. You see Bill Clark, who is famous for parties on Key Biscayne. They still talk about Bill Clark on Key Biscayne to this very day. Notice also 
uh, a various number of people, Bill Mueller, Roberto, Jane, and so many alumni from this class that are back today to celebrate the 50th anniversary. So the classes continue to grow and are, leaded, are led today by uh, Dr. Alfonso. This just shows the number of alumni now around the world, including both clinical and research fellows. There are at least by, uh, 775 alumni who trained here. And currently in 2012, there are 21 residents, seven per year, and 32 fellows, including fellows at our satellite offices. Let's go back to the building. <clears throat> This was the artist's rendering in 1960, and by 1962, the completed building is shown on your right, as discussed by George Blankenship. Well, the building was not enough, even though Ed Norton allowed room for expansion with shell floors, the building was totally full and the result was the annex in years 1973 to 75 in which trailers were pulled up into the parking lot to provide additional clinical space to the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. Clearly that was not enough. There was need for growth. And in 1972 you can see the artist rendering of the new proposed Annie Bates Leach Eye Hospital, and you can see that in 1976, this building was completed with a very busy Northwest 10th Avenue here between the hospital and the original building. Between 1976 and now, you can see the uh, landscaping, removal of telephone poles, removal of the freeway that was here next to the building, and now we have the beautiful Briar Patch uh, Mall between the two buildings uh, and serves as a nice place to be outside uh, on uh, our wonderful Florida weather. Growth took place at the Vision Research Center uh, in 1987 to 89. Dr. Norton made plans that the original Bascom Palmer was suited for building on top uh, with a great foundation and so an additional four floors of the research building uh, are completed as you see now in the building on the right. What about the education center? When the Annie Bates Leach Eye Hospital was completed in 1976, there was just this empty space in the back of the building with plans for expansion in the future. In 1981, the Edith and Errol Redder uh, Auditorium was completed. And prior to that, grand rounds and other conferences were held in Whitmer Hall in the second floor of the original building. After 1981, uh, the Redder Auditorium stood until December of 2011, in which the new Jose Baracol Auditorium was completed with uh, digital uh, displays and microphones at each uh, station in the auditorium. This served as the backdrop for the first day of this meeting and really a state of the art in an educational center at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. How about the clinics? On the left you see the vinyl upholstery and the, the stylish chairs from that era and now they're replaced with really the state-of-the-art uh, plush waiting area. The lobby has changed from the original building with the mural uh, of woman and window in 1962 to our current lobby uh, with David, trustworthy David, on duty at the front desk. 
What about the clinics? The Annie Bates Leach Eye Hospital opened as a 100-bed inpatient hospital. Now almost all of our surgery is outpatient and only a few inpatients on a daily census. The library has changed tremendously. Notice on the left the card catalogs and Reva Hurtis that carefully nurtured the library over all the decades. And on the right, we maintain the rare book room, but now cubicles occupy the library with computers for research uh, by our residents and fellows and faculty. This slide summarizes where we were and where we are now. I want to briefly just cover the top items. Outpatient visits, about 8,000 in 1962 to 250,000 in 2012. The number of surgical patients around 1,400 to around 18,000. And full-time faculty, three at the opening to a combination of 58 clinical and approximately 23 research faculty now. Bascom Palmer has expanded with satellites in Palm Beach, Plantation, and Naples. But Bascom Palmer is not limited to South Florida. When the need arises, we go international. And here you see the vision van going to Japan to help the victims of the tsunami. Of most importance is our local program and what we've accomplished over the last eight years. We were voted number one in the world, in the United States, over the last consecutive eight years through the era of Carmen Puyafito up to the current uh, year. And most importantly, those, that recognition includes number one in best clinical care and number one in residency training program. I think Dr. Norton would be very proud of this accomplishment. I will just end at this point by saying Dr. Bascom Palmer provided the dream and Dr. Norton provided the leadership, the perseverance, and the spirit that we still have today. Thank you very much.